Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Review video, uh, topic 6.4, the distribution of natural energy resources. So um, one of the things to think about here is that um, resources are not distributed um, evenly around the globe, right? Some countries have much more of a certain energy source than others. And it's not due to, you know, uh, any country being better or worse than the other. It's typically because of the geologic history and the formations of them. So when we're talking about resources, we're talking about the main three fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, but we're also talking about uranium because uranium is a fuel. It's not a fossil fuel, but it is a finite fuel that we use if, in the um, use of nuclear power. So um, that's going to be something to think, to think about with distribution. So let's go over where in the world you find these. So if you look right here, um, where are you going to find the uranium around the world? Uh, there's three big countries that tend to have the most um, uranium and um, where they're producing the most of it for um, uh, nuclear energy. And so uh, you're going to have Kazakhstan, which is that one on the right in the middle, right under Russia. Um, you're going to have Canada right above the United States, and you're going to have Australia. So those three are going to be where the mining for that ore is done. And remember, the questions you may be asked are going to be about, you know, what are the impacts about those? Um, you know, what are the economic impacts? So, you know, as you can see, um, it's not like just having the fuel resource makes you a global superpower. You have to get to it, you have to dig it out, and you have to um, send it around the world, or you have to use it as production for yourself in your own country. And so if you look right here, these are the oil distribution uh, around the world. So you're going to see this is concentrated. There is a good amount in South America, uh, right in the bottom of us, uh, in the United States, and Canada as well. And then there's a high concentration as well in the uh, Middle East, uh, in Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, those countries. So there's going to be some uh, fossil fuels there. And Russia as well does have a good amount of oil too. Then you can see natural gas. So one of the things that's uh, improving for the United States is that it's uh, moving up uh, on the uh, production of natural gas. And it has been for the last 15 or 20 years or so. Uh, but still in here, you're gonna have uh, Russia and the Middle East um, and some parts of Asia and Australia um, and the United States and Canada. Uh, less so here and then of course, much less in the African continent as well. And then coal, um, United States has a bunch of coal, but it's a very difficult uh, energy source, so we don't use it as much. Um, and then, of course, Russia and Australia and China and India are big po uh, producers of coal as well. Um, that's actually helped China in the last um, about 30, 40 years. Um, they've been uh, producing much more open coal mines uh, to meet their energy demands as well. So that's something to think about, and that's what's actually led to a lot of the air pollution, which we'll review in later units as well. So how do these things form? It just depends on the fuel source, but the idea is generally it's a bunch, it depends on two things. Number one, was this source on land or on in the, in the ocean when it began? Um, and then from there, it's a matter of heat, pressure, and time, okay? So if you look at the um, diagram on the left, coal is formed typically on land and forests, right? Those forests are pushed down and the peat is compressed to form lignite, if you remember talking about that in the previous video. And then from there, it forms bituminous coal and eventually, given enough time, it'll form that heat and anthracite. Now, sometimes if this is around a liquid, uh, you know, like a, a lake or a pond or a river, this may not only form coal, but it might also form some oil and natural gas. But typically we see this in abundance in the ocean, if you see the diagram on the right. Okay, so these this algae, these plant materials, they get pushed down underneath the water. And over time, those things decay and the pressure and heat pushes that stuff down and those dead plants and animals become oil. Um, and of course, sometimes the ocean above them may dry out uh, or, the, or the water above them may dry out. And you'll, you know, even though you don't have a bog or a swamp or an ocean above them, the oil will still be down there. Now, of course, there is still oil in the ocean, and that's where we've been drilling um, as a world, uh, as a nation around the world um, for the last, I'd say, about 50, 60 years in the United States, because that's where more of the oil is still at. The land resources, we've used quite a bit of that already. So it's important to know those processes. And so each country that has those resources is not because you know they strategically planned it out. It's just a matter of where things were millions of years ago and how those ended up 
uh, forming later on. And so here's some other resources you can use to look into these. Um, and I hope they're helpful and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.